Which airplane has a canard wing, two powerful pusher props, and a range of over a thousand miles? Right. Of course, it's Beechcraft Starship. And what if you shrink it down? Welcome to Big Metal Birds, and in this video, we review a Velocity V-Twin. Before we dive into the specs and unique features, let's trace the roots of this aircraft. I always find it fascinating to research the genius engineers and designers who push the boundaries of general aviation, and Danny Mayer is no exception. In 1984, he founded Velocity Incorporated with the idea of upgrading the older Long EZ designed by Burt Rutan, which was a two-seater, to something that could fit at least four adults and their belongings for a cross-country trip. But what's Long EZ? Long EZ was a continuation of Burt Rutan's design genius and the experience he gained with his Very Ease and Very Vegan kit to build airplanes with pusher props and canard wings. And if we continue down the history lane, we can trace the inspiration going back to a Swedish fighter jet, Saab 37 Vegan, the US prototype XB-70 Valkyrie, and even the Wright Flyer. Since Velocity adopted Rutan design, let's check what upgrades they brought. Their first model was called SE, which was an abbreviation of Standard Elite. Kit build, with options for either 160 or 200 horsepower Lycomings and fixed or retractable gear. It was capable of a cruise speed of 190 knots for over a thousand miles, carrying four adults. Those are pretty solid specs for a kit plane, right? An interesting fact is that there was even a jet-powered variant built for the Rocket Racing League. I personally have never heard of it, but apparently there was a racing league for rocket-powered planes to race in a circuit air racetrack. Later, Velocity offered an XL model, basically just a bigger fuselage and wingspan, with a wider array of engines, ranging from 180 horsepower Lycoming to 350 horsepower Continental. As with the SE model, options with fixed and retractable gears were presented. XL model offered more comfort for four or even five passengers, as the model XL5 had a rear bench seat for three rather than the alternative separate pair of seats. Now, the latest addition to the lineup is the V-Twin. Let's take a closer look. As usual, let's start with the fuselage. And despite of many interesting and innovative features of this plane, it would be silly not to mention the canard wing first. So let's dive into the design, starting with the main feature of the plane. One of its main benefits and probably most advertised features, which indeed is crucial in terms of safety, is stall prevention. Imagine this, you try to climb, lose too much speed and stall your plane. Well, with a canard wing, it will lose the lift first, naturally pulling the pitch down and preventing the full stall. It's like a safety feature by design. That being said, it won't save you if you don't know how to fly, so it's more like a nice-to-have design rather than a guardian angel, like, for example, a full recovery BRS. I still don't get why most US home builds don't have this option, while in Europe, it's mandatory for all light sport aircrafts. Another interesting aspect of Canard, which, to be honest, is not that well researched, so if anyone with a degree in aerodynamics can hop in comments, I'd appreciate that. Some research shows that the canard wing helps keep the airflow laminar, thus increasing the pusher prop efficiency. But of course, this small wing is not all. The fuselage itself is pretty light, thanks to the fiberglass. It might be that carbon fiber would be an even better choice, but I assume it would make it more expensive. Anyhow, Velocity claims the airframe to be tested for up to 6G positive. The main wings span 34 feet, generating lots of lift, which, again thanks to the canard wing, you shouldn't be afraid to utilize in full, climbing 2,000 feet per minute. So this combination of main wing, canard wing, and pusher props sitting very close to the centerline is what makes this plane truly special. There is almost no other twin to be this safe. Of course, we have Diamond with its roll cage fuselage and record in least fatal incidents, 
but V-Twin also does a lot to ensure you are safe, even in the worst case scenario. And what could be worse than a stall and an inevitable roll in the direction of the dead engine? Well, the combination I talked about earlier basically gets the chance of that to the bare minimum. Not to mention that it costs a lot less than Diamond Twin. But it comes with the price of some unusual additions, or in this case, reductions. Flaps. You won't find them on Velocity. And it seems like it is one of the main concerns for the potential pilots. Well, from the pilots who actually fly Velocity, it's just a thing to get used to. Just to mention, the landing speed for V-Twin is 85 knots, just 10 knots higher compared to the Cessna 172. As with many kit planes, you have a wide array of engine options, starting with a pair of Lycoming 320 of 160 horsepower, capable of 180 knots, up to a turbocharged UL520T, swooshing at over 230 knots. Interesting, that velocity state V never exceed to be 200, so I don't really get how they tested it for over 230 knots. Anyhow, all of these engines will give you an over a thousand miles range and over a thousand pounds of useful load, with cruise speed being over 180 knots. Doesn't it sound like an ideal cross-country cruiser? But one thing this plane demands, a proper concrete runway. Even if Velocity claims 1,500 feet for takeoff and landing, you would be much more comfortable with a runway at least 2,000 feet long. Another point contributing to its cruiser capabilities, interior. It's so cozy yet roomy inside, with a level of comfort comparable to Beechcraft Baron. By the way, we just did a video about it in case you are considering an older, time-tested twin rather than this experimental one. But being experimental doesn't make V-Twin bad in any case. The pusher prop makes noticeably less noise when located behind, and optional door seals add extra noise cancellation. An interesting fact is, the door seals don't actually make the cabin pressurized, they are purely a feature of passenger comfort. Also, it's worth mentioning there is no de-icing on this plane. Getting back to the kit building philosophy, you are limited only by the instrument panel size. Early models came with MFD and PFD from MGL Avionics, but again, you can easily fit a Garmin or Dynon there. So the kit costs 148,000. It's already fast build and has retractable gear. But what's in the kit? Well, everything except the engines, avionics, interior, and paint. To be absolutely honest, there is no real number I can tell you because you have tons and tons of different options here. I wouldn't recommend buying a used home built, but on a trade, a plane.com, there is just one. V-Twin, fresh year 2020 build, over half a million dollars. But again, we can see it's a state of the art build with double G3X, FLIR cameras, and truly lots of custom features. Another thing to consider is that Velocity offers Builder Assist for 500 per month for you to use their facility while building the aircraft. All tools and examples are included. Also, while you are building your plane, there is a V-Twin training course from Velocity for 2,500. It's not mandatory, but it's highly recommended. Well, as we wrap this video, let me know in the comments if you'd fly this bird, or you'd better stick to the time-tested ones. Of course, each bird we review has its place in the sky, and I'm sure there are many pilots who will choose it for its safety and comfort. Thank you so much for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like it and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating stories from above the clouds.